Quality of life varies hugely across the world because of uneven development. If we have a look at the average earnings of people across the world, you can see from this map that um, in North America and Western Europe and Australia, New Zealand and Japan, people are earning a lot more than in countries such as in Central Africa. On our next slide, this shows the Human Development Index. Again, we can see that development varies hugely with um, countries of Western Europe and North America. You've got Russia, Saudi Arabia, Australia, New Zealand, um, experiencing a very good quality of life. Whereas again, in Madagascar and countries of Central Africa, um, quality of life is not so good. Now in this PowerPoint, we're going to be trying to show why um, there's been such uneven development across the world. Now, the first set of factors are physical factors or just totally natural things. Here are four. A country that has lots of natural hazards, well, they've got to spend their money rebuilding the country and thinking of defences to combat these natural hazards. Therefore, they have less money to spend on developing their country. An example is Bangladesh continually getting horrendous floods due to cyclones that are hitting the country. Um, if those weren't there, they'd have more money to spend on their country. Next, natural resources. A country that has few natural resources can make few products and then they make less money and therefore there's less tax to be spent on developing the country. Also, a poorer country might not have enough money to exploit the resources it has for example, building roads or ports to export those resources. Um, so resources is something affecting development. Next, we've got climate. Um, in a very poor climate, um, you're not going to be able to grow much food. And with less food production, it could lead to malnutrition, um, such as those countries of Central Africa, and this will hinder development. Also, countries with a poor climate will have fewer crops to sell. This means they will earn less, and that means um, they have a worse quality of life because um, they haven't got the money to spend on improving their lives. Finally, we'll have a look at location. Landlocked countries have a huge disadvantage because it's harder and more expensive to trade, and therefore they have less to spend on development. Uh, the poorest country in Southeast Asia is Afghanistan, which is landlocked. And Africa, which is the poorest continent, it has 11 landlocked countries. Also, um, a poor location is often tropical regions because of the amount of diseases they attract. One of which is the tsetse fly. Um, this attacks cattle and makes them lazy and unproductive slowing down the level of development or the speed of development for the country. Next, we'll just have a look at four human factors that affect development. The first is education. Now, if lots of people in a country are educated, it gives you a skilled workforce, which means more goods will be produced and more money being made for the country. Also, a skilled workforce will mean that people earn more, they will then pay more tax, and then the government has more money to spend on development. It's no surprise that the country with the best quality of life in the world, Norway, um, people have 13 years of education on average, whereas Niger, the place with the worst quality of life, people have two years on average in education. Another human factor is healthcare. Well, ill people can't work. And so in a country where there's a lot, lot of illness, um, less tax is paid towards the government, and this gives the government less money to develop their country. A third factor is aid. Um, a country experiencing lots of aid from other countries, such as building schools or improving water supplies, um, this will help them to develop quicker, whereas a country receiving less aid will not have that advantage. Finally, tourism. Um, such as safaris in Kenya within Africa. Um, if lots of tourists visit your country, they'll be spending money in cafes, restaurants, hotels, um, souvenirs and transport. Um, this extra money um, can be used to increase the level of development within the country. Four other human factors, well, three other human factors are debt, trade and political unrest. We're having a look at those in a minute. 
Now, why is it so hard for countries to break out of poverty? We'll look at three reasons. The first reason is debt. Many of the poorer countries of the world face huge debts because they've borrowed money in the past from international organisations and other countries. Now, the problem with this is that each year you're paying your debt back rather than having that money to spend on improving your country. Another reason why it's hard to break out of poverty is trade. Um, the poorer countries of the world tend to sell cheap primary products such as wood and they're left having to buy from richer countries secondary products such as cars and phones which are expensive. Now if you're constantly selling cheaper things and constantly having to buy expensive things you've got more money going out than coming in and which keeps a country poor. A final reason why it's hard for countries to break out of poverty is political unrest. Often in the poorer countries of the world, the civil war or terrorism and tribal disputes. This means the government is having to spend their money on solving these problems instead of um, spending their money on education, healthcare and improving their country. Another problem is unstable or corrupt governments. With an unstable or corrupt government, they are stealing money from the country, which means there's less to spend on the community and therefore people's health and education declines and their quality of life is worse.